initially, and I think like most people, you're very skeptical about, I'm going to tell students with cognitive and intellectual disabilities about their disability, and we're going to talk about that. How is that going to work? And in the end, it wasn't even until we did those parts of self-advocacy that I think it really became meaningful to them. When conceptualizing the student involvement in the IEP process, it's very important for the student to really understand what their disability is and what really goes on into how to accommodate their needs and how to best get the supports, whether it be academic or whether it be in their daily life. Many students who haven't been through this process before don't even know that they have a disability. They may know that, stu that school has been a challenge for them, but no one's ever talked to them and said, you have a disability and here's what it is. Did you know you had an IEP? No. Yes. So what was it like for you to learn about it? Marne wants to be just like anyone else, like everyone else, right? Fit in and be like her peers. Fifth grade is also a very difficult time for a lot of students. A lot of changes are happening and there's a big transition into middle school. And they're becoming just more self-aware of where they are performing in relationship to their peers. She was becoming more and more aware that there was a gap between her understanding of the material and her peers' understanding. Math, for sure. I really liked it, math, once. And I thought I was doing good at it. So when I saw my IEP, uh, I saw that I wasn't really doing all that good at it. From learning that, what did you do for yourself so that you can continue to grow and have success in math? I had kept setting goals for myself. You continue to set goals? Yes. Okay. Um, what about tools and resources that you can use? Well, we bring our math journals, and I be taking notes every time in class. So when I have a math test, I can use it. For some parents, um, it's like not my kid. Um, this is not my kid because there's a lot of guilt and shame behind it, thinking that maybe I've done something wrong that contributed to my child having this disability, not realizing that it's not anything that you've done. We all learn differently. So Preston learned that he is a visual learner. This is how I prefer to learn visual learning. When I see the stuff on the board, it is easy and when I and when the stuff is highlighted. When he found out and he took the test and did the activity that we had along with, um, with the lesson, he really began to internalize, well, what does it mean to be a visual learner? And he asked um, my, my colleague, who's the teacher of the program, well, can I ask for visual aids in all my classes? And of course, uh, the teacher said, well, yes, definitely. Preston's just face when he was like, you mean I can tell teachers that I need visual representations of things that we're learning? I was like, yeah, you can do that. And he was just so genuinely like a huge weight had been taken off his shoulders. He began to get visual aids, and the teachers, of course, were very receptive because he was asking for it. We just need to give them the supports, and if the students are aware of that support, those skills and those supports can kind of transcend every grade coming up and transcend other aspects of their lives, um, from their peer relationships to working at home with their parents on their homework to say, Mom, Where's my calculator? The curriculum is very much building on what are my strengths, what are my struggles, what are my limitations, and then talking about oh, how all those limitations or struggles kind of work together and form something that might really disable you from, from doing other things that other people are doing in the same way. And it was just really cool to watch because I think just it started clicking in their minds like, oh, it's not because I'm lazy, and it's not because I'm dumb. It's because there is some way that my body and my brain works that just works differently than other people. And knowing that, I think they really started to seek out ways that they could change that and get what they need. Across the board, 
every student can interact with this material and they're able to think about, you know, what do I need to be successful and how do I get there and how, who do I ask? The way that I learn best is making a checklist, my checklist. We had a short time to work with Tony to prepare him for his meeting. Now we have, in Transition Group, gone over all the parts of the IEP. You know, what are present levels, what are goals, what are uh, long-term goals, short-term goals, um, accommodations. Math isn't a strong suit and he has to, if he has a checklist, like he said, it helps him. So I think he's always going to need some guidance, some support, but you know, he'll be pretty independent. Yeah. When they have inventory or boxes come in with merchandise, it's my job to unpackage it and put it on a handcart. That's what I do at ONA. So next year, Preston, are you going to have the same teachers as you do this year? Maybe. 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 Maybe like one. Maybe one, one teacher, teacher. will be the same. So aside from that one teacher, yes. will your other teachers know everything about you and how you learn and what you need and your goals? No. No. So how are they going to find out? Um, I'm going to tell them. Yeah. Um, how confident are you that you can tell your teachers about uh, what you need and what your goals are? On the first day of school, I would tell them. I think it has helped him to see his differences as well as his commonalities with other people too. He has to reach out for help and it's okay to reach out for help and to tell what his needs are. Preston wants to be a chef and so in 12th grade, I would hope that he's being given the opportunities in his IEP meetings to say, I want to go to culinary school, and I know that in order to get to culinary school, I need to mm -hmm. complete these steps, I need to have this kind of document. And then when he gets there to say, hey, when I'm t taking these tests, I need these accommodations. So first we got to figure out how many ounces of this, these, this, this, all of this. I felt like the student-led IEP process gave her that extra push and that level of confidence, and also just her own self-awareness and understanding of the fact that there's nothing wrong with her. She's just a different learner than other people and that she can um, absolutely apply herself and progress just like other students. When I get to middle school, I want to achieve all my goals, especially my math goals. When I grow up, I want to be an archaeologist, a scientist, biologist, and a basketball player. My career goes on all involved math, which makes it important for me to strengthen my skills. During morning math in her, in her classroom, there was a question that directly uh, related to one of the goals that she had just set for herself. Morning math's not her favorite thing, but she saw that question and she goes, oh, that's one of my goals. I need to focus on this. And she started doing it, trying to do it herself. She like called me over for some support. And as they were going over that question in morning math, I mean, she, full attention. Now I can keep going? You got six. Bring down your decimal. Great. Okay, so where did you um, make your error? Um, six and two. I've seen that what really helps determine a student's success is not the severity of their disability, it's how engaged they are in using strategies to overcome it. The kids who really say, yes, I know that strategy works for me and I'm going to try it, they're the ones who do well. Nice job, Marnate. Let's go ahead and give Marnate two good claps.